Hello my friends, today I want to introduce you to The Try Guys. Now my friends, this is a YouTube empire, an empire which has consistently posted over the last decade on a week to week basis. The Try Guys are known throughout YouTube for posting the wackiest and the most insane possible challenges that a human being could ever possibly try to do. Look at these videos, they're absolutely insane and every single week on a day to day basis, The Try Guys will always try to do the most insane challenges for your entertainment and they've been doing this for such a long time and you're really starting to think to yourself could these guys do anything wrong could the try guys ever try to do something wrong well my friend oh, oh wait oh it does seem in the last week or so that one of these challenges has gone horribly wrong it seems that it's no longer the try guys and in this case one of the try guy has actually failed at a challenge miserably and you may be wondering what is this challenge well my friends it's the try not to cheat on your wife challenge. And my friends, I don't usually speak about relationship drama on a week to week basis on this channel. I don't usually have any particular interest in it, but honestly, this topic right now has the internet gripped by its absolute ball sack. The crusty old ball sack of the internet is in a firm grip. And honestly, I do just want a taste of those nuts. Because seriously, my friends, this situation is spreading like complete and utter wildfire at this moment. This is absolutely everywhere, and so many people are speaking about this. It's something which honestly is different to a lot of other situations. Because, you know, in other situations, when a YouTuber does something bad, people aren't particularly shocked. But with this guy who we're speaking about today, it's very, very different. Given the persona that this man has portrayed over the last decade, given everything that this man has done and said about his family, about his wife, about just in general who he is as a human being this is a different situation and a lot of people have been saying the biggest crime in this situation is the fact that he cheated on his wife and honestly I, I can accept that but for me personally the biggest crime is the fact that this man still tries to sell nfts i mean i'd say hold on to those mate because you're probably going to need them to pay your bills but Good luck. But regardless of uh, all of that, you may be a little bit confused to what I'm actually speaking about right now. You may be just thinking, I love the Try Guys. I, I, I grew up watching them and they're my favorite old content creators. And you know what? Fair enough. You're perfectly entitled to still love these guys because it is a group channel. There isn't everybody in this, you know, doing one thing and that means they're all bad guys. But honestly, there is a lot we need to go through today. And I feel like I need to give you guys a little bit of an explanation of how we actually got here, how we actually got to the point of where a man is apologizing for destroying his entire family and ruining his life whilst attaching a pog face to it. I think we need some explanation and uh, I'm going to give you all of that. I'm going to go through absolutely everything from start to finish, but I'm also going to cover how this situation is actually far worse than we actually thought. And honestly, there are some deep, dark conspiracy theories that we need to go into. Some holes of the internet of where you're probably thinking, wow, Fraser, you need to get a life. And honestly... Yeah, you're probably not wrong, but there's a lot we need to speak about, and, well, yeah, we're gonna do that. So, my friends, let's get to the beginning of this story. It starts off with good old Ned from Try Guys. This man was an absolutely loved and adored human being, seen as a guy who just was a really good, loving husband, a loving father, and honestly, a lot of people looked up to this bloke. They thought, I want to be like this man, and honestly, guys, if you want to be like an influencer, it's time for you to go get some fucking therapy. <laughs> no, just... Honestly, uh, my bit of advice would be, guys, uh, probably don't look up to celebrities and influencers who you really don't have too much of a connection with. Now, I'm not saying you can't aspire to be like somebody on like a social media or uh, like a business perspective, but just don't, I don't think idolizing people that you don't, you really don't know that much is honestly a good idea. Now, maybe in some cases, like, I don't know, uh, s someone in history who was a really nice guy, let's just take me, <laughs> for example. So. You can idolize me, but uh, just maybe... Maybe not this guy. I love that I was uh, trying to think of somebody who's done a lot of historical wonderful things throughout history. And the first thing that came to my mind is me. I don't, I'm sorry. Um, here's my apology. I, I'm not attaching a pog face to it. But yeah, this guy, Ned, absolutely adored. People loved him. But over the last few months, people have started to notice that Ned was not appearing in new videos on the Try Guys YouTube channel. And he even wasn't featuring on the podcast that he was a part of. And now in the real world, when somebody doesn't appear at work for a few days, a few weeks, or they just, you know, in general, don't uh, turn up to something, you probably think, oh, that person's busy. Oh, that person's 
probably got some predicaments that they're dealing with in their life right now. But my friends, this is the influencer world. It's a complete different universe. And when a 30-year-old influencer, in particular a 30-year-old male influencer, doesn't turn up to their podcast for free episodes, you can sure bet that they've probably just ruined their fucking life. <laughs> And to be honest, people did start to take that mantra because people were noticing that, hey, Ned is being edited out of videos. There seemed to be an upload schedule that has now been changed and it did just feel like Ned was being phased out. And honestly, when I think people first heard about this, they probably did think, well, you know, uh, Ned may be quitting, but why would they be editing him out of things? There was a lot of sussy-wussy things going on. And honestly, when something sussy-wussy is going on, you know, shit's about to hit the fan. As you've probably guessed and as you probably know, things started to get proven, get admitted to, and people started to come out with statements. And a lot of people were devastated because for one, they've lost one of their favorite content creators, but also they can no longer watch a podcast because their ex-favorite creator is no longer on there. And I have to say, my friends, have no fear. There is another podcast out there called The Buddies Podcast, which you can replace that other one with because, you know, the worst thing that we've actually done on this is, it's, it's probably worse to be fair, is um is this? Do you know? I reckon this man. He's just got a little little pickle Rick, a little pickle, pickle Rick body pillow sat next to him every single night. It's what keeps him sane. Is it? He goes. <laughs> get in the pickle Rick voice. Go on, <laughs> Nick. <laughs> a pickle Rick. <laughs> this, is, this is this is fucking awful. What is this? I'm pickle Nick. <laughs> <laughs> you know you were saying, oh, mate. You know you were saying. Oh, no. You know you were saying he eats things and becomes it. <laughs> he He's going to become fucking... pickle Nick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, pickle Nick. Oh, mate, mate, pickle Nick's going to fucking take over the world. Wobble on a dum dum. You may say, Fraser, don't you think that's a little distasteful promoting a podcast using the, using a, a divorce to your advantage? And I would absolutely, completely agree. I think that's even more of a reason to subscribe. In fact, I think the main crime that we need to speak about here is the fact that we tried to bring back Pickle Rick. I I don't really know why, but uh, yeah, please subscribe to the Buddies Podcast. Link's in the description. And also subscribe to this channel because y y you know you want to. I've got no legal threats other than saying... I, I don't know. I just, please just subscribe to both channels. Cheers. But yes, my friends, as I was saying, this situation only got a million times worse when it was confirmed by pretty much leaked DMs started to come out, which did show a lot of sussy wussy things and uh, not the good type of sussy wussy. Basically, somebody leaked a conversation where they claimed to have witnessed Ned trying to get with somebody at a bar. And honestly, this claim does look extremely legit. There was a photo as evidence and apparently the person in these DMs took them and actually sent them to the wife of Nick, Ariel. And uh, yeah, this only resulted in the rumors absolutely exploding and getting worse and worse because I, I really don't know how you look past this other than maybe they broke up and we don't know about it yet, but uh, that's obviously not the case. And those rumors on social media in the last week have just gone absolutely viral. And if you're watching this video in two years time for some weird reason, this week is Wednesday, the 28th of September, meaning that the rumors went round on Tuesday, the 27th of September. Yes, I know maths, but basically these rumors start to circulate and my friends, it was a fucking mess. People were being like, Ned's done this, Ned's done that, Ned's cheated on his wife, I can't believe Ned's done this. And honestly, when I first saw this, I, I did first for some reason think that it said Nick rather than Ned. And honestly, you're probably going to hear me say throughout this video, getting a mix of Nick and Ned, I apologize. I actually had no idea who the Try Guys were. And this is kind of familiar to a situation I had the other day of where people were saying, you don't know who this guy is. Guys, I don't know why you all expect me to know every single fucking human being on the planet that's got some form of platform. I know I speak about people for a living, but guys, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not that smart, to be honest with you, and uh, I don't know who this guy is, and I didn't know who this guy is, but now around 24 hours later, I've basically got onto this guy's entire fucking bibliography and photographed it onto my mind. I have gone so deep into this topic that honestly, I think I just need to start to actually uh, uh, probably probably get a wife myself and uh, actually maybe have uh, a kid, because that's what usual 25 year olds are doing, but I'm doing this. Please subscribe. But I did think, oh, you know, what's Nick done now? Has Nick Agado posted his bum hole on the internet again? Could it possibly be any worse than that? And then I discovered, oh, it's not Nick. It's Ned. And he's definitely not shown his bum hole. <laughs> 
Sorry. But yeah, people were devastated and it did turn out that some people were being like, oh, it could just be fake rumours. And I also played in that category thinking, well, you know, y you don't know what's going on until somebody, oh, wait, no, uh, Try Guys just came out of a post basically confirming that yes, this guy is a complete fucking bellend. And then Ned also put out an apology, which as I said earlier, he applied a, a, a delightful pog face to. Honestly, uh, when somebody comes out and says, guys, I, I cheated on my wife, and uh, yes, I may have had uh, children with that person, and we had a family and a life together, and I may have based my entire content around that, and uh, become this role model to so many people around the world, I can't take that apology for all of that, uh, ruining all of that seriously, when there's just a big fucking pog face in my face, and I'm thinking... <laughs> I can't, and I shouldn't laugh, but what the fuck? I know we didn't premeditate it through the pog, but it's just like, I, I, I mean, when my parents broke up, my, my dad certainly wasn't doing the pog face. In fact, the only pog face that came was the bank when they came and uh, collected our beings when, uh, you know, um, we went bankrupt and we had to move into a, f a one bedroom flat. Hi. Moving back into this, yeah, Ned confirmed everything and also the Try Guys basically confirmed everything by saying that they no longer have Ned on their, uh, I guess, contractual basis. But then even Ariel, Ariel, apologies if I mispronounced that, came out with a statement which honestly just makes me think, wow, you are way too nice. And I was going to say, well, maybe something else is going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. But honestly, if there was, I'm pretty sure uh, Ned wouldn't have come out with a statement where he did apologize for anything. So I can only take at this point that this wonderful human being is honestly just way too nice of a person. And I don't think they're being necessarily nice towards Ned. I actually think that they're just doing this for the benefit of their own children. Because you've got to just think about this for a second. Imagine, you know, your entire family drama being publicized on the internet. Imagine you are a kid and you grow up and you realize that your parents' divorce has been publicly posted everywhere. Now, honestly, I've publicly posted my own parents' divorce everywhere because I'm still coping with that myself. I, I, I don't know what I'm saying. Basically, I think it would be very, very upsetting and nasty to see this whole situation as the kid when they grow up. And what I think the mother, Ariel, has done in this situation is a very, very, very mature thing and something which honestly I'm not sure I could personally do myself. And I will explain why because it does kind of lead into the whole territory of why I was saying this situation it, it is much worse than it's actually being received as currently. But I do want to go through all of these three statements here because to be honest with you, these statements are, well, uh, it was some of them at least are, absolutely. When I say some of them, I say, Nicky old boy, uh, his statement, fucking mental, just, just fucking mental for a multitude of reasons. But also, I kind of want to somewhat come to the defense of the other people in the Try Guys here. As I said, I have no emotional attachment to these people because I did not even know who they were around uh, like two days ago. But there is some like moral thing in my little brain that wants to come out and say, guys, I think we need to lay off some of these people who are dubbing these guys as s snakes. I definitely don't think these people are that. I think it has absolutely nothing to do with it. I think it has more to do with business because the person that Ned actually did cheat with in this situation was apparently an employee. An employee who apparently was on a permanent contract, worked pretty much, I believe, on a day-to-day -day basis. I may not be right on that, but they definitely did work to, with each other on a regular basis. It wasn't like they met, I don't know, this person did a little bit of work here and there, like a subcontracted thing. No, this person was a permanent employee, I believe, and yeah, this person had an affair with them. They cheated on their wife, they ruined their relationship and family with this person, and honestly, I think the people at the Try Guys were just trying to avoid a potential lawsuit. And you know, whilst I believe it's technically not against the law, because I mean, that would be a very strange law. I mean, imagine if we actually started like sentencing people to death for cheating on people. I mean, sounds reasonable. Imagine if we did that. Uh, <laughs> basically, it's not against the law, I'm pretty sure, but it can result in, uh, I, I believe, employee employer misconduct lawsuits. And I think the guys at Try Guys were like, uh, we, we like our money, we like our business. And honestly, I'm not keen on keeping a bloke who, uh, cheats on somebody that he has started a family with uh, on, on our business. And they were like, my guy, uh, you've got to fuck off now because uh, we want to do this by ourselves because we don't want to get sued for lots of money. So uh, 
get the fuck out. And honestly, I don't think that's a sneaky move. I just think they are being businessmen because they're uh, shock horror guys. This whole industry is this thing called a business where honestly, for a lot of people, especially the guys that have been doing this for a very long time, they probably just want to prioritize profit and uh, actually supporting the family that they have. Uh, unlike this guy, um, but you know, some people actually want to do that. And he's not one of them. And I understand this is an unusual situation. As I said, I, I don't really ever speak about, you know, relationship issues going on on the internet. You know, if like Jake Paul had a little kissy wishy with somebody else whilst he was kissy wishy and somebody else, I wouldn't necessarily honestly give a shit. Uh, none of my business. But I think it is a little bit different when you've got a guy here who, as I said earlier, has completely built their brand around being an ideal role model of a husband and father. This guy was looked up to by so many. You didn't have to scroll back too far along ago to find people basically idolizing this guy and saying what a wonderful human being this is. He loves his wife, he loves his wife, he had a kid with her, but this is different, as I said, to so many other things. Honestly, if a Twitch streamer had a little kiss, you know, with another person whilst they were dating somebody else, it's bad, but I, I don't care, as I just said about the Jake thing, I, I really wouldn't give a, a, a little talk on it, but it's so much different, as I keep saying and, re and reiterating, when it's a guy who has agreed, because because I think when you agree to start a family with somebody, when you then cheat on that person, it's so fucking significantly, utterly, terribly worse that it could possibly be when you cheat on somebody when you are just in a regular relationship. Both things are bad, but it's oh so much fucking more immoral and wrong when you have a kid with that person, multiple kids with that person, when you are married to that person. I think it's a million times worse when you do that. And just look at this guy's content. Just look at this and think, this man, what the fuck? Are you ready? Am I ready for two? Yeah. Gosh, no. I think I am. My wife is pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> the due date is November 30th. So uh, well, it'll be like a little holiday, holiday baby. <laughs> Wanted to share the good news. Oh, that's so awesome. Um, there's no actual content or messaging that we need to discuss, so. Great. <laughs> that's it. Ariel is pregnant officially. We can't wait to meet the baby. Hey. I'm so excited. Yes. Ooh. Baby. This video is from 2020, and what we're going to go into in the future of this video does allege that a lot of the things going on in this situation did actually occur before 2020 and 2019 and possibly continued onwards. And I, I, I think that makes it so insane, and as I said, we will get into that, to see this level of content, this wholesomeness. They are agreeing and planning to have a child. It's, it's genuinely disturbing to me, and the reason I think this is so much worse than just a regular a girlfriend or boyfriend cheating on their girlfriend or boyfriend boyfriend is this is a thing of where when you have a kid with somebody, you are now attached to that person you've had that kid with for the rest of your life. Regardless if you no longer love that person, regardless of if you hate that person, you are going to be attached to that person. Even if you just marry them and don't have kids, you are going to always have that attachment to them because you have done something which is so much more significant than being in a relationship, especially when you have a child, because that child will hopefully always be in their life for the rest of their days. And that means that whether they stay together or break up, they're always going to have to be attached in some way or the other because that child will always be attached, hopefully, to their mother and their father. And that means when this person cheats on this person, that person is going to have to look this person in their eyes for the rest of their life. In a regular relationship, you can just be like, right, uh, you're a fucking prick, see you later, and you never have to think about them again. But in this case, this guy knows that this woman has to stare him in the eyes for the rest of her life and, and have some attachment and bond to him forever. Whatever that bond actually is, positive or negative, it's going to be there because she is clearly a good woman. She is clearly a good mother and it shows with her response. She is absolutely way too nice, but honestly, I can completely understand this. The mother in this situation obviously does not want their child to grow up in what's called a broken household, which honestly, I very much can respect as somebody that did grow up in a broken household when my parents, you know, did break up. 
funny story, but, but when they did break up, obviously it made things a lot more difficult. Financial stability was way, way a million times worse. We became much more poor and it wasn't a good life to lead and it would have been much better if my parents stayed together. And I think in this situation, what we have here is a mother that just wants to bring stability for her children, which is obviously devastating and only shows why this thing is so much worse because in my opinion, she's pretty much just being forced into a tight and difficult situation of having to stay with this guy. Even though what he did was awful, she is doing it out of the goodness of her own heart and choosing her children over her personal feelings. Again, in my personal opinion, I don't know the deeper undertones here, but I believe that's kind of what's going on here. When you have a child, it's probably the most significant commitment that you can ever make in your entire life, other than the commitment of uh, signing on my to Inaba Enterprises. But that commitment of having a child is the most significant thing. And when you, I, I guess, break those boundaries, to me, you're just a fucking horrible person. Now, I understand people do make mistakes, and when it comes to cheating, I, I, I do think it's horrible. But I think, as I said, it's so inconsequentially more worse when you've had a kid with that person you are cheating on. It's just so utterly disturbing, and I think it's something that really hasn't been spoken about enough in this situation, and only makes this whole thing so much worse. I've seen a lot of people kind of jump to the defense of this guy, saying why would they fire him? I mean, I gave the reasons it's more to do with money and lawsuits, but honestly, I'm not sure if I'd want to work with somebody who's cheated on their wife who they've had a kid with. It's just just utterly disturbing and honestly a perfect example of a guy who really really just in general is not a good person in my opinion and honestly I, I I know that might sound a little bit personal considering I have no idea who this person was like two days ago but when you're a person in particular who bases their whole brand on being this nice, wholesome, wonderful father, and it turns out that whole thing is a complete, utterly a fucking terrible facade. It's just disturbing to me, because it's like this guy has been lying to everyone for years and years. It's not like he was just a regular go-about uh, vlogger who, you know, does get up to crazy antics constantly, and, you know, it's almost like expected that they'll do something terrible every now and again. This is a guy who put this facade on of being this wonderful fucking human being when the reality is, is he was completely breaking the boundaries of his trust with not only his wife, but also his child. Because I do think that this also reflects in the children in this situation who are going to be negatively impacted by this. And that's utterly fucking devastating, but it's it's just the truth, and these kids are going to have to see this probably every day for the rest of their lives, and honestly, that is just so utterly fucking sad. But then we get on to actual Ned's statement, which is just so fucking shit. This apology just makes me think, oh my god, how, how do these apologies keep getting worse? They're so shit, but he takes the biscuit for this one, because like every other influencer, this bloke, he's got it lined up on the old, uh, on the old notes app, the old notes app apology, it's back, baby, Let's get a clap in the chat for that, because this is what he had to say. Family should have always been my priority. Yeah. I mean, Captain fucking hindsight. And then he says, but I lost my focus. You lost your focus. Losing your focus is like, oh, my ADHD is being very annoying because I have forgotten to take my medication once again. It's not, oh, my ADHD is being very annoying today and I'm going to go cheat on my wife that I've had two kids with. It's not really that, is it? But then he says, uh, it was a consensual workplace relationship. Translation, translation, translation from YouTuber bullshit to English. I cheated on my wife. And me saying it's consensual apparently makes it better. Okay. I'm sorry for any pain that my actions may have caused to the, the guys and the fans, but most of all to Ariel. The only thing that matters right now is my marriage and my children, and that's where I'm going to focus my attention. I mean, fuck me. This is... Could you not even just whack out the old Sony A7 camera and just apologize on video? Do you not even have the balls to do that? My friend, you have based your entire content on being a lovable, respectable father, and you can't even apologize for basically just lying to your entire fan base's faces for, like, your entire career. That's just fucking embarrassing, and this whole apology is utterly embarrassing. And that does kind of bring us up to speed with things here. We've got the world's worst fucking apology, and we've also got a very, very kind, lovely statement, which I think has just been done in order to pretty much just protect the children in this situation. But that now brings us into the 
Conspiracy fear. Oh, God. It brings us into the, the wild theories, my friend. The theories going around about this thing and the things that I've discovered that honestly kind of fucking blow my mind, which I've briefly touched on in this video so far, which make me think, did people know? And oh, my God, what has actually been going on? So, uh, cue the, uh, the, 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 the spooky lights. Wow, wasn't that really cool? You should definitely subscribe to my podcast because you now don't have a podcast to watch with your favorite influencer on because he's a total bell end. So go subscribe to this one. <laughs> Thanks. But yes, my friends, this is where we go into the more, I guess, things that aren't necessarily true, but you make you think what's actually going on here. And it does bring us to the world's worst website, Reddit. The place of where, honestly, we probably do need to fucking ban this website. But at the end of the day, it does bring us some mysterious things every now and again. And this does start us with this post right here. A month ago, somebody on the Try Guys Reddit actually made a, a little detailed post about my girlfriend hates Ned. And honestly, mate, give her a fucking pat on the back and probably, you know, probably give her a little hint. Maybe buy a lottery ticket. It goes on to say, my girlfriend absolutely loathes Ned. She finds him pretentious, a tryhard, and just not funny. Any hope on changing her mind? Yeah, uh, mate, I, uh, for some reason, I just don't think... I just don't think that's happening anytime soon, to be honest with you. But yeah, just like in an influencer, there's honestly... It's, it's honestly a pretty regular thing. I get comments saying they hate me all the time. Please comment something nice. Uh, but yeah, you get comments like it and it's really nothing groundbreaking until you actually go and look in the comment section. Maybe it's the fact that Ned openly cheats on his wife and has no remorse, but plays the family man persona on the channel kind of wild. And honestly, despite this post being somewhat of a prophecy, like the one from Harry Potter and Rudolph the Phoenix, uh, this post actually got downvoted when it originally came out, but it's now being praised widespread because, you know, I, I guess the proof did come out. And, you know, you, you, you can't really take something like that before there's any evidence of it and, and say it's true. So I can completely understand why at one point people were downvoting it. But there are a lot of posts on this Reddit which really do scarily line up and paint a picture of where you're thinking, things might actually be worse than we thought. Because a year ago, somebody actually made a comment saying, I met them all, I guess the Try Guys, at a bar once, and the one whose whole shtick is, I love my wife and kids, was insanely creepy and tried to hook up with my friend, figures lol. But you're thinking it's bad, and you're thinking it lines up, but my friends, it, uh, it only continues to get progressively worse. Poor girl kept trying to dance and have a good time, and he kept going behind her, trying to kiss her neck and get her to grind on him. She kept moving, but he was pretty persistent and offered to get her a hotel and tried giving us backstage tickets to their show the next day. The whole rest of the night, I tried to wrap my brain saying, what the fuck do they actually do at their shows and who would pay for this shit? And also asked the guy with glasses if he was always this sloppy and he reluctantly says yes. But then my friends, it, uh, it progressively gets even worse when there was another post actually speaking about Ned in 2019 being weird towards their friend at a bar and trying to get her to dance on him the whole entire night. And once again, it is on a tour. And honestly, when it comes to these tour things, I know people in industries that don't really behave particularly well when they go on tour. This is honestly a bit of a, a stereotypical trope when it comes to musicians going on tour, where they do a lot of bad, horrible things with fans and uh, cheat usually on their partners. I'm not going to go into specifics, but this definitely happens and it does line up with a lot of the stories that have been told in the last few days and it does get worse. Because somebody did say that the guys from the Try Guys were all there and they even bought them all drinks, which basically paints a picture of, hey, everyone in the Try Guys knew what was actually going on here. And to be honest with you, I, I really, really wouldn't be shocked if that was the case. I, I, I really wouldn't. The amount of situations where people in YouTube groups know something bad is going on, but they merely won't say anything because, you know, they possibly have a higher up saying they can't say anything because it'll damage profit or they themselves won't want to damage their profits. Now, I don't necessarily know if that's exactly the case in this situation. I'd have no proof to really say that, but based on my own experiences and previous things that's happened in the, the history of social media, I, I really would not be a surprise here. Like, this is an allegation, of course, but, you know, we're, we're, with no smoke, we're, there is, you know, no fire, and honestly, in this situation, it's not really a fire. It's probably just the fucking Great Fire of London. It's, it's more of an inferno at this point, and it's getting bigger, it's getting more wild, and a lot of these posts are genuinely quite weird to look back on because there are so many things here saying yes about the guy who had the shtick of loving his wife was actually a cheater and it's like I, I'm only inclined to believe a lot of this because so many of this was said over a year ago posted on small reddit posts I mean it's not like they were making big YouTube videos about it these guys weren't gaining 
any following on unknown profiles. They were just getting a story out there that they had. Whether they are exactly 100% true or not, I'm only inclined to have a little bit of belief for all of them. And obviously, I do have to say that they aren't proven allegations, but well, they are stories which, in my opinion, have somewhat weight to them, especially with everything that's gone on in the last few days. I'm going to conclude this situation by saying, at this point, honestly, uh, Jenna Marbles and Julian are probably the only couple that I have any fucking hope for at this point on social media. But yeah, this whole thing is utterly and deeply completely disturbing. And don't come onto this channel thinking that I'm going to be speaking about relationship drama every fucking week. I, I, I don't care if, I don't know, Shane Dawson is now in a relationship with a, 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 another cat. I, I, I don't care. I don't want to speak about it other than maybe laughing about it on my podcast, which you should go subscribe to. I, I, I don't care about that. But I, I do find it disturbing when situations like this happen, when it is somebody that's built their entire brand on being a respectable, loving, caring father figure. And honestly, I'm more just sad for the fans of these people as much as I can make jokes. It is just depressing that people have had to look up to this guy for so long. And yet again, they've been let down by another person that they once looked up to. And, you know, maybe I'm being a bit of a contrarian when I'm saying don't look up to people that you don't exactly know or idolize them. And But honestly, after everything, it is difficult to just idolize influencers. Maybe just idolize people that have actually contributed massive things to this world. I, I'm not saying that there aren't influencers that haven't done that but you know it's it's very difficult to find one and if you do know any comment them down below but that is the ending of this video i'm sending nothing but support to ariel in this situation i apologize if i mispronounced that name but i really really truly fucking feel sorry for her and the children in the situation who are going to be affected by this probably for the rest of their lives but yeah that is the ending of this video please share this with the, the rest of the social media world and uh yeah as i said earlier please like this video please comment your opinions down below because honestly i I, I want discourse. I want comments down below. I want you guys to discuss this because I think it is a very insane topic, which usually I, I don't really speak about much. And I would love to know your guys' opinions. Was I too harsh? Was there more to the story? Let me know down below. But also please go subscribe to my podcast, Buddy's Podcast. Links are in the description. I've plugged it like a million times. You may as well just go do it at the end of the day. But also, all social medias are in the description. I am sitting on Twitter. I am on Instagram. And yeah, I will see you in the next video where we are not speaking about a divorce of somebody that once again owns a podcast. Bye-bye and have a lovely day. Peace out.